Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. We all have heard of the Lake Worth Playhouse, but how many of you have actually gone there? I hope I hope a lot of you have, but you would be so impressed and so excited to get in there. It's not just how wonderful the, the actors and the whole theater is, but it's it's the old theater that was, I guess it was a movie house before, but we're going to have Justin Hare, who is the our, the uh, marketing director, tell us a little bit about the Playhouse, and then we can talk about what you have on, you know, that's coming up. So tell us a little bit about the history of the Playhouse. Well, hey there, Nina. How are you doing? Um, just getting into it here. And, um, you know, the Playhouse has been a landmark here for quite some time, uh, as many people know. It... Um, <clears throat> was actually um, brought here in the late 20s, and uh, we've been to quite a bit here, believe it or not. There was a hurricane that actually tore the old building down, and um, they rebuilt it here back up in the 50s, and we're going strong ever since. We still have the uh, original ceiling inside of the theater that was put up after the reconstruction and it's a beautiful, beautiful sight to see for anybody that hasn't been down here. Even if you have and you've never taken a chance to look up, I would highly recommend it when you sit down in your seat there. I would almost say it's like Art Deco. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And the one thing I notice when I'm there is I don't ever feel cramped. People can walk in front of you as you're seated, and you don't have to get up at all. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a wonderful thing too. The seating is nicely spaced, where you don't feel claustrophobic, uh, as as you do with some theaters, mm-hmm. even, even movie theaters nowadays. They try to jam you in there as close as they can. But uh, for for having three hundred seats, it's quite spacious. Yeah, I'm just going to ask those so three hundred seats, and that's why it's very important when you see. First of all, I hope hopefully you'll take this a subscription now. That's the best way. But if you don't do that. Um, you're you're never going to really feel like you've been pushed in somewhere because every seat uh, really is very visible on the stage, and it's uh, and the now we can really talk about what are we going to be seeing, and and you know we don't talk about your black box and explain what that is to someone because you are ending Sweet Charity this this weekend, but yet you have so- something else that you're working on. Yes, well, we have our main stage theater, and then directly next door in the Stanzik studio, we have our uh, independent film showings and a small black box theater, which is a 60-seat intimate theater where we do smaller productions. Um, you know, the cast in there range anywhere from three to maybe seven, ten top people. And um, we, we call them our limited engagements. And, you know, it's, it's wonderful. It's to be honest with you, the black box theaters more for the adult crowd, uh, where main stage we've got a lot of stuff that's children appropriate. But I uh, just wanted to clarify that for anybody wondering, if you're coming to see one of our black box shows, I would leave the children at home. Okay, but let me ask you about the how many seats are there? There are 60 seats in the mm. mm-hmm. I like that. It's very intimate, isn't it? It is. So do you do you find that some of the people who are play in your major performances are also play that? They do, yes. Yep, they bounce back and forth between the productions. That, that does your artistic director run both of those? He does. Hmm. Yep, Daniel takes on both of those, and uh, believe it or not, he actually um, has and is a director for quite a few of them talented and we we run three three black box productions per season uh whereas our main stage we've got six productions never a dull moment there and never a quiet uh uh, night it seems like you not at all (laughs) we we like to keep it active yeah that's wonderful well i always enjoy going there and you know now i mean a few years ago your theater was in a few restaurants they were the only game in town but now you can walk the street before, then you can walk the street after. It's qu- especially I always go Friday. Usually I go Saturday nights, and it's really a, a wonderful place to be. Oh yeah, it's 
very alive down here. With the city getting built up and all these new businesses coming in, and especially the uh, the main change of the town, we are seeing a lot more traffic coming through the streets and, and through our doors as well. Now, I just wanted a clarification on the time that your shows start, not at Black Box, but in the main stage. Is it 7.30 or is it always 8? 8 o'clock is when the show starts. Um, and on Saturdays and Sundays, we have 2 p.m. matinees. Mm. Okay. You know, that's always been very exciting in a sense that I can't imagine some of your performers who put so much of their oh, body and soul into their performance when I see at night, how they can also do it at 2 o'clock. I have no idea. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, that, I'm sure they're tired by the end of the night on Saturdays and Sundays, for sure. Yeah, but they still, they're, I guess when they get in that that whole world, they just, just go on stage and they become whomever they're playing. Yes, that is true. They become that character. Right. I think that's marvelous. Okay, well, one thing I, I did say, um, and I would just repeat again, that Justin Hare is the marketing director and uh, of the Lake Worth Playhouse, and we're talking with him about, <clears throat> about well, we, we wanted you to know, if you haven't seen Sweet Charity, you by the time you hear this show, you'll be able to make one more time on Sunday. And if there are any seats left, you can get it. But uh, how is that Sweet Charity? What is that, actually? Well, Sweet Charity is a uh, love story, believe it or not. Again, it's running, and this is the last weekend, running until the 28th. But it is uh, inspired by Federico Fellini's Knights of Cabrilla. It explores the turbulent love life of Charity Hope Valentine, a hopelessly romantic but comically unfortunate dance hall hostess in New York City. A tuneful, groovy mid 1960s score by Sky Coleman, sparkling lyrics by Dorothy Fields, and a hilarious book by Neil Simon. Sweet Charity captures all the energy, humor, and heartbreak of the life in the big city. Well, anything that Neil Simon does. <laughs> oh, yeah, anything Neil Simon does is absolutely fantastic. We've okay. got some musical numbers included in there, such as Big Spender. If my friends could see me now, there's got to be something better than this. I'm a brass band, and baby, dream your dream. Now, the music, this is uh, all piped in? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that uh, you don't have to pay for, you know, a whole orchestra and anything. That's it's the way it's it's so expensive as it is. And 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 tell me the how long is it? Is it an, a two hour show with a it is with, intermission? A, with an intermission with intermission about two two hours, fifteen minutes, two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. You get your money's worth. It's uh it, that's that's wonderful. Okay, so now if you still haven't seen it and you want to see it, Sunday's your day to do that. But let's talk now about your fantastic new uh, season coming up. Uh, this next upcoming season is a great one. A lot of good shows. We're kicking off the season with Footloose the Musical. That's coming in July, running July 11th to the 28th. And following that is Sister Act, a divine musical comedy. Mm. That's coming up in October. It runs October 3rd through the 20th. And then for our holiday production, we have Inspecting Carol, which is a twist on the classic Christmas Carol. That's running November 14th through December 1st. And as we get into 2020, uh, we've got Gypsy, January 16th through February 2nd, followed by Agatha Christie's Witness for the Prosecution, February 27th through March 15th. And the final show of the season is Ronald Dahl's Matilda, the musical, mm-hmm. April 9th through the 26th. Uh, as the marketing director, aren't you amazed that your artistic director can pull this all off? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what, we, what we do, and uh, you know, a lot of these shows come from the fan feedback. We've actually put out a survey uh, in, in the middle of the year, and take them until up until the uh, final production where we actually get the audience input as to what they'd like to see. So a lot of these have been voted and selected by popular demand. 
That's very nice of you because, listen, these are your fans. These are who you want to come. And if you give them what they want, they'll come. But they're all so popular anyway, so I have no idea what the other opportunities were, but th this sounds like a great lineup. And, and so when do you start attracting the actors? I mean, this is all the way into 2020. Do you have to do that right away? Well, we do uh, audition, a uh, call to auditions, and we send those out uh, a few months before the start of the production. And we'll, we'll do the auditions and then run our callbacks, and then we'll start uh, preparing for the show. Yeah, it's, and I'm so glad, you, and I know you use a lot of the actors who live and work right here in South Florida, which is very important. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we've got a lot of local talent, uh, people who are here year-round and even seasonal that uh, audition for these shows. And how do you, where do you get your scenery? A lot of your scenery is very good. Is someone making that for you? Yes, actually, we have that done in-house. We have a whole team uh, that is responsible for everything that you see on stage. And... We give a big shout out to Cindy Taylor, who is our set designer here, and she's one of the many that make all the magic happen here. Mm -hmm. Now, when she's building this, so do you build it right there? Uh, do you have a very large area in the back that we don't ever see? We do. Yeah, there's there's a lot more to this building than uh, meets the eye. There's, there's plenty of backspace area. We've got a full... Uh, shop back there where we have them building the sets for us right here in house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because some people don't have that space and they have to drag it in from somewhere else or, or bring it in. They're already made for them, but that's what makes it nice for you. It's so homegrown there, it feels to me. Absolutely. Tell me, though, about the ladies who are outside the ticket area, are they volunteers or are they paid? Because they are so nice and they seem to be, you know, they're, they're right there. If there's an error, they fix it right away. Uh, you do have volunteers. I know they're in the theater all the time, but what's is that your staff on the outside? Yes, uh, we have the box office staff downstairs uh, in, in the window there that's responsible for the ticket sales, among many other things. But we do rely uh, a lot on our volunteers as the ushers and uh, ticket takers that uh, contribute quite a bit of help to us to making sure that everybody finds their seats and has accommodated what they need. Yeah, they do. They're very helpful, and it's really important. Uh, and I know the, and if you want some little snacks, they're there, too. They're not very expensive, but uh, it's, it's really, you do a lot with the theater. I mean, it's a, you know, we go to these big grand theaters, and they have all the, the latest things because, you know, they were built that way. But this is, it's really an old movie theater, and this is what what you had. In fact, you've probably made some changes as it is. But I, um, I always like to go there. I think that people are very friendly, and your volunteers are so helpful. Are you looking for more volunteers? We never announced that on our show. Is that yes, something? Yes, we are always looking for volunteers. We've okay. got many different uses for volunteers, and we would appreciate much anybody that's interested in helping out. They can uh, shoot us an email or get in touch with us through the website. Right, which is lakeworthplayhouse.org. Lake oh, yes. See, you're a not-for-profit. That's something else people should know. So you can always contribute if you have a couple of extra hundred dollars or something you want to donate. Uh, it's a nice place to donate it because people aren't paid huge salaries. They all work from their heart. They really do love their, their Lake Worth Playhouse, and it's a very dedicated organization. So going now into what you the, the first show, um, let's, let's talk about the Footloose, is it? And, yes, Footloose. And tell us about that. Okay, well, Footloose. Again, that's coming up in July, running July 11th through the 28th. And this is one of the most explosive movie musicals in recent memory. Really? Onto the live stage with exhilarating results. 
When Ren and his mother moved from Chicago to a small farming town, Ren is prepared for the inevitable adjustment period at his new high school. What he isn't prepared for is the rigorous local ethics, including a band of dance institute and a local preacher determined to exercise and control over the town's youth that he cannot command in his own home. <laughs> when the reverend's rebellious daughter sets her sights on Ren, her roughneck boyfriend tries to sabotage Ren's reputation. With many of the locals eager to believe the worst about the new kid, the heartfelt story that emerges is of a father longing for his son he lost and a young man aching for the father who walked out on him. Hmm. The rock and rhythm of the Oscar and Tony-nominated Top 40 score, Footloose is the ultimate 80s dance musical with a message. Wow. That sounds wonderful. It sounds like it's, you know, it has pathos, but it also has... As you you're just describing, lots of music and lots of sound, and that's uh, that's really excellent. Um, can we? I'd like to talk a little bit about the way that you, and I know the artistic director does this, but I'm sure you you've watched this when you put a call out, you know, for what do you call that for um, the the actors? There's a an audition, a call for audition. Yeah, a call, call to audition. Yes, mm -hmm. and. You must have, let's say you have 20 people that come for the one part. How does that go? Is it, is it tough? Oh, it's very tough. Very tough. We take a lot into consideration, and again, that's why we do callbacks, because we may not be able to make a decision right there that night on the first or second audition night. Um, we may just have to call them back and put some thought and consideration into who best fits the part or the role. And is, is that a single decision from the artistic director? Does he talk to some of you and get your input? No, we, we've got a few people that are there at the auditions that, uh, mm -hmm. that make recommendations and, and uh, make the selection. Right. There's a, the show on Broadway that, that was the whole story. I forget the name of it, where you had all these. That was the story of the callbacks and the, the try, all the actors suffering. <laughs> Over all that, what was the name of that show? It's oh, very, I can't recall. Yeah, the name I mean, I, it's, it's so important, <laughs> right, right, right. But uh, you never think about that. What it must be like because you go after all these shows and you go, and then there's rejection and rejection. I mean, that must not be great. Um, yeah. Well, you know, a lot goes into picking the part for the role. You know, if, if it's a lead role and part specific, then we really look for the criteria that meets all of all of the necessities, being looks, voice, dancing, uh, acting skills. So a lot goes into the process of picking the perfect candidate for the role of the character. And when you think about it, where do you, that was another part about it, you had to have costumes. So... Yeah. Are you making the costumes? Are you renting the costumes? Uh, because everyone has different body sizes, and I mean that that in itself is is important. You have to look good in the costume, or even if you're smart and you have you're a good actor, it w won't come across. So who decides on the costumes? Well, we've we've got a costume designer for every production, uh. and uh, a lot of the times the costumes are made custom. Um, there are occasions where we do rent costumes, or uh, you know piece things together, but uh, for the most part, the costume designer will take care of making what's needed for the production. So it's one thing to have a regular theater act, you know, an actor just playing a theater part, but when you have to have someone singing and dancing, that must be very difficult to find someone that can do everything. But, but you find it, them it because I've seen them there. Well, sometimes we find them, and sometimes we have to make them. What do you mean by that? Well, we, we put them to it. You know, we let them know what it entails, and we kind of craft them uh, to get ready for that part. It takes a, a lot of work. They're in here a lot of hours uh, up until the production, doing rehearsals and uh, tech and everything else. So uh, a lot of these characters are crafted and, and kind of brought to life, so to speak. Uh-huh. I see. So it isn't like someone comes in with all the knowledge that we see on the stage. It's You're saying that there's lots of rehearsals and lots of discussion, and they have to just make themselves fit the role if they want it. Absolutely. 
Well, tell me about you a little bit. Now, my guest is Justin Hare. Did you always, have you always worked in theater, or have you always worked in marketing this way? Oh, well, I've, I've done marketing for quite some time. I um, really got heavy into it back in 2008 when I was living out in Southern California. Um, kind of just, you know, it was, was something I really enjoyed doing and continued my career in it. Uh, as far as the theater goes, uh, as I was a little boy, my grandmother used to take me to the theater uh, during our summer breaks, actually up to the old Burt Reynolds Theater that uh, was in Tequesta. Uh, we lived right down the street from there, so we'd catch shows there all the time, as well as over at the Kravis. And, um, you know, I always always had a love for the theater. Um, I truthfully have not yet auditioned for any roles, but I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> Is that on your wish list? It is, yeah. I'd, I'd actually like to be a part of one of the productions. Uh, oh, okay. So there it is. There's your passion coming out, right? Yep, yep. Well, uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm still up in the air as to which one I want to audition for, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys will see me in one of these productions really soon. Oh, well, that's right. Well, we heard it uh, on, on this show that you're, you're, so you think you can be in the production and still do marketing? Oh, absolutely. Oh, uh, absolutely right. Yeah. You have to. I'm always up for a challenge. Yeah, sounds like it. Well, so that's what you want to do. Well, you know, I can understand that. There are a lot of people who actually have always wanted to act, but uh, they they just never got the chance. And then one day something happens and they do it. And, I mean, so you see some of the characters on television now, and they've been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. And some yeah. of them have been successful, and some of them you just never hear again from. But... It's all in the cards, and when you think about Betty White in, in The Golden Girls and how long she's been doing this, right? Oh, yeah, oh, forever, and that's one of my favorite shows. I used to watch that with my grandmother Right. All the time. I did also with oh, my yeah. mother. I still look at it. It's still funny as uh, everything. It is the lines, when you think about it, acting is important, but it's the writers who produce those lines. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it takes an awful lot. Yeah. Right, and sometimes you have more than one writer, and that's what comes comes out of this. It's it's so entertaining. But um, I'm going to get back to what what's happening here. Of course, <clears throat> I always get sidetracked, but it's okay. Justin Hare is the marketing director for the Lake Worth Playhouse, <laughs> and he is certainly, um, you know, we may find him now as one of the actors, but for the moment, he's marketing all the, the upcoming shows. So... Let's reiterate the shows, and let's tell people how they can get a subscription now, uh, and then they'll pick the seat that they want. And you have what? You have six shows? Six main stage productions, yes. Okay, six main stage productions. So let's just go over them again and see if we can hustle up some people to get their subscription now. Okay, well, the best way to get a subscription, uh, the fastest and easiest way is to go online to our website. Again, that's lakeworthplayhouse.org. And uh, under our season, you'll see a download subscription brochure link right above the lineup. Uh, The second way that you can get a subscription is to come into the box office and fill out the brochure right here and turn it into our wonderful box office staff, and they'll get your seats picked out all squared away for the season. Um, but just to reiterate, this season, we're starting out with Footloose, the musical. That runs July 11th through the 28th, followed by Sister Act, October 3rd through the 20th. Then comes Inspecting Carol, November 14th through December 1st. Gypsy, starting in January, running the 16th through February 2nd. Agatha Christie's Witness for the Prosecution, February 27th through March 15th. And last but not least, Ronald Dahl's Matilda, the musical, April 9th through the 26th of 2020. Hmm. Okay, that's that's really wonderful. And so, and, and did you say what the cost is? The cost for tickets, our orchestra is $35 and the mezzanine is $29. So inexpensive. And what is the subscription? The subscription prices. I've got to, uh, for the full full season subscription in our orchestra is $158, and for the mezzanine is 130 
Now, we do also offer a Snowbird subscription, which is the first or the last three shows of the season. The orchestra is $96 for the Snowbird subscription or $78 for the mezzanine. That's interesting. You have a Snowbird. You actually have something for Snowbirds. So they don't have to pay and not be able to come here for the shows. Yes, indeed. Yep, and I also wanted to add that we also do a preview night dinner and a show, which is the um, the night before opening night of every show. And we are paired up with a bunch of wonderful restaurants here locally in downtown Lake Worth. Um, you know, you get to go have a nice, beautiful dinner, followed by the show, and it's just a lovely night out on the town. Yes, that's really wonderful to hear that. Uh, that way people can do exactly what, you know, what they they want to do. They want to go out for the evening or they want to go for a matinee and they want to have the restaurant and they want to be able to walk around. It's very safe. It's very easy to get to. You can get it, get there off I-95 and 6th Avenue. Uh, There's lots of things that, uh, you know, lots of ways that you can get there. It's uh, it's, it's right off the highway um, and you turn it, well, you turn 6th Avenue and then head north and you uh, turn at Lake Worth. It's called, it's, it's, what's Lake it? Avenue. Lake Avenue, right. Mm-hmm, right on Lake Avenue. And, and in addition to that, Anita, I wanted to mention, not only do we have the preview night dinners, but we also have an anytime dinner and a show package. Hmm. Uh, so for any of the shows outside of the preview night dinner and the show, you can book one of the restaurants and you can select. Now, the difference is the preview night is a pre-selected restaurant for each show, but our anytime, you get to pick one of the many restaurants from our selection. Great. Uh, to accommodate with your thanks your justin show. that's really just if you need help call justin here he's the marketing director he'll help you and thank you so much justin i um, can't wait to go to your next show well we look forward to having you it's always a pleasure to speak with you guys uh we love working with you and uh, thank you for the opportunity we do also all right thanks so much good luck all right Anita. you have a good weekend you too bye bye-bye